had a portion of my Lord's place to be with us as we go through the service tonight, Lord, pray that the decisions made here tonight will be made according to your will and not according to our personal feelings, Lord. We pray to continue to be with our church, pray that each and everything we do here will be done according to your will. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. May be seated. Good evening. It's good seeing you here tonight. Looking forward to a lot of blessings. My favorite service of the whole week is our Sunday night service because that's more of our family type service and I always enjoy that. Uh, it's good having some visitors back here with us from Georgia. Good having some visitors back here with Doug. We'll delete that and try to get it out again <laughs> with the Duns as well. Good having you with us again. Um, I did want to mention, I had a prayer request this morning uh, for my great niece, uh, Nevaeh Rudder. Uh, she's just about a month old. Uh, they did find out that she has a ruptured esophagus, and they're doing surgery on her tonight. So if you would uh, pray for her. Uh, they've had her sedated you know, all this time, and, uh, so just pray that all goes well. My sister is up there with uh, her daughter. And my sister's a nurse, and she's she'll be able to look over everything uh, tomorrow. Uh, they'll give her access to all that information. So anyway, uh, that's what they believe is causing a lot of the issues, but uh, they're not still not sure. I think as far as the uh, seizures, so if you would continue to pray for her. Uh, a couple of the things I wanted to mention: How many adults would be interested? Now you don't have to commit to it right now, but how many? may slightly, maybe, possibly be interested in doing a Christmas play. And I'm talking about the adults are in the play, not the kids. Let me see a show of hands. I see, I see this going on. <laughs> Any, anyone? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Um, well, what I'm going to do, we uh, we kind of thought about this. I've been thinking about it. every year at the end of the Christmas play. I think uh, you know it'd be nice to have something for the adults as well. Uh, it wouldn't be done the same night; it would be done a different night. And uh, we couldn't do the same play because we just don't have. The, there's a bunch of kids. We usually have about 20, 25 kids in the play, uh, and I know we're not going to get that many adults. So. Uh, there are several other plays for me to choose from. I'll just need to go through and pick uh, you know, what we'll do. But I'll try to get something like that together and then let you know. But it'll be something, it won't be like a real long play where you have a thousand lines you know, uh, to memorize. It'll be something, hopefully, uh, short, sweet, but have a good message. And, uh, rocking and chair or something. What's that? Sort of like a rocking chair. A rocking chair? Yeah, we could probably get you a part if you just want to sit in a rocking chair. And uh, we can get a couple parts like that, probably. But uh, anyway, I think it'd be nice. I think if we've done this at other churches I've been in. Uh, the adults have put on a Christmas play, and usually they're fairly basic. Uh, we've had some a little more elaborate. And then we've had adults mixed with the kids going play. And we've not done that here. Uh, but I really enjoy the kids when they do their Christmas play. The young people, they do a fantastic job every year. And then, too, for the teens who have just come out of the teen group, if they want to be a part of that as well, they can be. Um, or, and I think a couple of them came in, but if you all want to be a part of an adult play, you can do that. Uh, I want to also mention to you, we do need some volunteers still for uh, the Greenbrier. Now, I need to turn in some hours to them at the end of this week, and I'll probably go ahead and put in a few hours. You don't have to commit to anything right now, but if you are able to do that and would like to do that, uh, go up there even with a small group, uh, or even a large group, it doesn't matter. If we took 15 people up there and everybody worked an hour, obviously we would get our four volunteer hours in. Uh, we just have to have a total of four, uh, and we'll get that fairly easily, I think. Um, but anyway, if you're interested, please let me know. Most of the times that are available are Wednesday to Saturday from 10 to 3. And that starts the first week of November and goes through, I think, the uh, first full week of December. And uh, if you go early, you'll be more involved with doing the, the dream tree that they have there at the Greenbrier where you wrap the presents and then help get all that set up. Uh, there will be some unloading that you may have to do. Uh, if you go later, uh, that's more of sorting out the gifts for all the different groups. They have a, a large area that they do all that in. So um, I can let you know as far as the location where you need to be. It's the same location as last year, uh, if you did that last year. Um, 
So please let me know about that if you're interested. Uh, <clears throat> and then also tonight after our service, we're going to have a, just a quick meeting. Uh, just basically we're going to be voting on uh, Dan as far as bringing him on as a part-time assistant. Uh, it'll be, again, roughly right now, just something very short uh, each week, roughly six to ten hours. So we're not looking at a lot of things uh, right now because he does have uh, another job. Uh, and uh, just to let you know, the main duties that he'll have is basically to assist me with anything that I need to get done. So duties may change throughout, you know, from one week to the next. But just a rough idea of some of the things uh, could be you know, funerals, helping get food, flowers, setting up, cleaning up. Uh, you know, whenever he's available to do that, he will be available all the time, obviously. Uh, I think it'd be good training. I don't think he's ever done uh, the Lord's Supper uh, or a baptism. That's good training. Uh, again, he's looking to go into the pastor eventually. Um, I think that would be good to get that experience. Uh, helping organize uh, trips and activities. I'd like to get uh, trips for our seniors, get that back up and going. Uh, and even for some of the adults, some of the trips we've done before, uh, see maybe if we can get something going there. Uh, reviewing missionaries or letters, uh, banquets, that's always a, that's a lot of work for a banquet. Uh, and if you've ever helped out with a banquet, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but maybe helping some of those areas, sound, internet, maintenance. Uh, just miscellaneous projects. So there's a lot of things there. It's just kind of uh, where he would be needed for the week, uh, you know, kind of thing, which would be what he would be doing. So, and I appreciate uh, he has a servant's heart, and I appreciate that. He's already kind of been, you know, what do you need help with around the church? And he's helped me with different things here around the church, you know, along with Rodney. Rodney's been a big blessing since he's been here. And, uh, and just so you know, uh, some of you have asked me this uh, for these men, because they're not anybody who does that on a regular basis. You know, we've had others help come mow the lawn you know, from time to time with weed eating. Some of these young men do some weed eating. Uh, we don't always uh, give pay or salary, but what I try to do is give uh, love offerings like gas cards, you know, other things, uh, Walmart gift cards, things that would be helpful to them. So uh, some of you have asked about that, uh, making sure that people are taken care of. And I want to let you know that we try to do that as often as we can. God's blessed our church uh, you know, financially. Uh, when COVID came, things didn't fall off. They actually improved. Uh, we had some people start giving through uh, the Tithely app. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, that's available. Uh, I think it's more younger people that are using that because uh, people just don't use checks and cash much anymore. Um, but anyway, there's just things like that that's available. And anyway, that's some of the stuff that he would be doing. And uh, I want to mention to you also Brother Nate Bean. Uh, he's been here with us for Cold Wars now for, goodness, I think uh, 11 or 12 years maybe. It's been a long time. But he's preaching revival services and preaching John's church this week. So if you are uh, available and would like to go up there, their services start at 7 o'clock. And uh, that is uh, Freedom Baptist Church. I always want to call it Friendship, but it's Freedom Baptist Church. Friendship Baptist Church, I think, is Brother Joe Spencer. Uh, his church. So, uh, anyway, that is up in him. Um, and then again, a couple weeks from now, for Sunday, November 6th, the first Sunday in November, uh, don't forget, you get that extra hour of sleep. So, that's always a precious, precious time of year. And uh, <clears throat> we always kind of joke around about it because you get that extra hour. And I know everybody does what we do. You just stay up longer. Uh, and then you're still just as tired when you come in. It's Sunday morning, so uh, but just remember, you set your clock back one hour, and if I remember right, uh, didn't West Virginia vote on that to not do that anymore after the spring or something? They ever in here or anything like that? Seems like I remember something like that. That went through the Senate. A lot of states are getting away from the time change because it's just not as needed as it once was, but I think that's the case. I think after the spring, this spring, I think they're not going to do time changes. Uh, so that would be a little different uh, to get used to that. Um, so anyway, that's all the announcements I have. Let's all stand. Let's welcome one another to our service, and then we'll prepare for our Sunday night on the
can ask no if you mind praying for the offering. Thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us word. I want to pray your blessed offering, Lord. I want to pray for our missionary to receive in the military, Lord. Please have prayer. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Sing, we all get to heaven. Four ninety eight.
right, I wonder, do we have any young people that have some Bible memory verses they'd like to come up and say? Any Bible memory verses, come on up. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of them, whether he be bond or free. Ephesians 6, 8. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oh, Lord, I'm glad these do I put my job. Thou shall. All right, we have any adults? Maybe have a favorite Bible memory verse, or maybe a verse that the Lord blessed you with this past week, maybe in your Bible reading. Or it could be just an answer to prayer. Yeah, they. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Amen. Yes, it's good. Anybody else? This is the time when I ask for stuff like this. Uh, I always see people you know, scratching their face or something. I feel like an auctioneer, like I'm ready to <laughs> jump on you and call on you. So, so I just saw a couple hands go up there. Here you go, Terry. I just drew a blank. <laughs> <laughs> First time in my life I've been speechless. <laughs> yeah. The beginning, uh, begin, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and uh, knowledge and wisdom. I think I got that right. Yeah, wisdom structure. Wisdom structure. Yeah. There's actually like three or four verses like that are very, very similar. So that's good. Very good. Very true. God commanded His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans five eight. Yes. For whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Yep, good verse. Anybody else? Even answer your prayer this past week? Or... All right. Well, uh, do we have a special? Nice. Okay. All right. Well, it's time for our special then. And then after that, uh, Dan will come on up and he'll preach. And I forgot to tell him last week, we put a little hell on. Uh, until we got started, and I didn't want to interrupt him, but uh, we're going to go ahead and have our special now, then Dan's going to come up and preach for us.
chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, we'll be looking at verses, we're going to start in verse 12, Matthew chapter 25. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about things that God has given us. God has given us salvation. He's given us His only begotten Son, so we have our salvation through. We see that in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The way to sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life of Jesus Christ the Lord. It's a gift. He's given that to us. And the question really tonight is, what are you doing with it? Are you fulfilling your commission? Are you fulfilling your commission? We're going to start, let me begin reading here in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 12. Follow along with me as I read. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto him, let's be, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same, and made them five, uh, made them other five talents. <clears throat> and likewise he that had received two, he also gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had uh, received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou de uh, deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. <clears throat> Enter a vow into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast sown, uh, thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strong. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there are there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not. And gather where I have straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money into the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Let's go ahead and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the time we have here, Lord, to be able to be in your word this evening. God, I pray, Lord, as you've laid upon my heart uh, this message to preach, that you will. Speak through me this evening, Lord, that you will take myself out of the equation, out of out of my words, out, Lord, and that you will just place your words in my mouth. Let me speak through me, Lord. Let me be that instrument of use, I pray. Let you use me this evening. Let the uh, preach your word, Lord. We know your word will turn void. Ask you to use your word, Lord, and let your word stand here tonight. We love you, Lord. We thank you for the way you've given us. We thank you for the ability to be able to even be here tonight. We praise you for that. I ask you to bless us now. Meet with us here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you fulfilling your commission? God has given us something. Just like this traveler gave three servants. But to start off here tonight with the very first thing to be able to get this is you have to be a servant of God. You have to be a servant of God. Now, this does. How does this? How do, how do you become a servant of God? Well, very importantly, first off, 
is you have to be saved. You have to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you have not had a time in your life when you have, you can go back, you can recall, you can go back to in your mind of when you remember be, being a, that sinner. Well, I know we're all still sinners, but being that sinner in need of salvation. And at that moment you remember praying and asking God to come into your heart and save you. If you don't have that moment, I, I want you to get that settled here tonight. Because first off, you have to be a servant. You have to have salvation. But with being a servant to the Lord, being a servant of God is not just salvation. <coughs> salvation is simply is how he says you are his. He claims you. But see, being a servant is a choice that we make. To serve him. Now, let, me, let, me, let me explain a little bit what I'm talking about. In your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 6. Just right over to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. I'll have a few verses of scripture for us to look at this evening. But Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. We'll look at this one verse. And it says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and man. Now if you can, in your Bible, go to Romans. The book of Romans. Romans chapter 6. In verses 14 through 18. Is where I'll be reading. Romans chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. The Bible says this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made, made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So, with salvation, yes, do we become the servants of the Lord? Yes. But it is a choice that we have to make. Even as child, children of God, being saved, we make a choice. We see there in Matthew chapter, um, chapter 6, verse 24. You can't serve two masters. Right. Every decision we are making is a decision of who we are going to serve. Serving our flesh, or decide to serve the Lord. These are a choice we have to make. So, yes, in order to be a servant of God, yes, you have to be saved. You have to know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, but it's more than just that. You have to make the decision, you have to make the commitment every time to choose to serve the Lord. And that's a little easier said than done. Isn't that funny how things work in life? So many things we can say so easily, but then when you get put to the test, it's much more challenging. God has provided you with the ability. He has provided you with the ability. Does that mean we're going to be perfect? No, that's not what he's provided us with to be perfect. Because of our flesh, we are sinners. But, he has provided us with the ability to make the decision for him. We are not automatically servants of the Lord. So, but now that that's been said... My second point here is the main point I'm going to be speaking on tonight. So now that being said, we're the servants of God, if we have made that decision, if, you, if you're thinking in your head, okay, yes, I want to be able to choose the Lord. I, I want to decide with the Lord. I, I, I know I understand what you're saying, Brother Dan. I can't serve two masters. I understand that. And this is the main thing I want to really focus on tonight, which is what are you doing with what the Master has given you? What are you doing with what the master's giving you. In Matthew chapter 25 here, we see three very good examples of what we ought to be doing. I want to, I want to point something out with these three examples. One had five talents. One had two. And another had just one. I want to point out, it is not the amount of what I'm fixing to say that makes the difference. All right, yes. It is not the amount. If you noticed, the man that doubled his five and doubled the two were blessed the same. 
It was double. That was the, that's the key there, that's the importance. It was double. In the one with one town, he was, he hid and he was afraid. So it wasn't the amount, and I'd say it, it wasn't the area, and it was in fact, they did something with what the Lord gave them. Man. Their, the Lord came, the, that, that, that traveler came through, he gave them something, and they did something with it. They didn't just harness for themselves. And what is that something? Well, that something that I share with you tonight is reproducing yourself, doubling yourself mm -hmm. yeah. as a Christian. That is the Great Commission. That is the commission which we are told to, to, to obey. That's, that's what we are told to go out and do, is to reproduce ourselves, to double ourselves. God has given us this gift of salvation. We cannot save people. I understand. We, I understand. we can't save people. What we are to double ourselves as in God has given us the gift of salvation, we are now to go out and share that gift, to reproduce ourselves. Now, if we go to Matthew chapter 28, but we're not that far away, just a couple pages away. Matthew chapter 28, the well-known portion of Scripture. Uh, verse 18, one of, uh, known as one of the great commission verses. This is, this is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and let's look, listen now. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's three things, three important things I think we can see there. For one, we see teach mentioned twice. They're talking about two different things. So the first one we see. Okay, we'll go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach them about what? Well, it, that's that's simply that's basically sharing your testimony. We're going, we're teaching, we are sharing Jesus Christ. We're teaching about Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ has done. So that is what we always refer to as witnessing, telling other people about Christ, which is a thing of the Great Commission. That is a part of our commission. That is something we're supposed to do. That is the beginning of doubling yourself. But it doesn't just stop there. Then we see baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That is the first step in obedience. That first step in obedience is believer baptism. And then thirdly, this is the one where the ball gets dropped so often. That third, that second teach. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you all way. I said to teach, observe all things. What, what are those all things? Well, I always think of it like this. As a father, you want to teach your son what you know. So if I know how to fish, that's something I enjoy doing. One thing I would like to have a desire to do is teach my son how to fish. Because I want him to be able to fish would be with me, but if, if not just that, I want him to be, even be farther than what I am. Mm -hmm. And then for one day, he'll be able to teach his own son. Right? I think as fathers, I think we think that, and uh, mothers, I think it's the same way with your son or your daughter. You want to be able to teach them those things that you know. That's what it's talking about in all things. Now, I'm not talking about fishing. That's not necessarily what the Bible's talking about there. But when it says all things, it's now yours to teach them what you know about God. That's right. To teach them what this Bible says. We use the term discipling someone. The Great Commission, what we have been given, is not just salvation. Mm -hmm. It's all of this. God has given us all of this. So yes, we are to go and tell people about Christ. Because that is the first step. If you don't do that, can't do the rest of it. God, that's the first step. You've got to do that. You have to. But we can't just drop the ball and leave it. We have to be able to go and now we have to teach them. Not about your opinions, not nothing like that. Right. Yeah. Strictly what the Bible says. I, I remember in Florida, I worked uh, a part time job at a quick loop place. 
and my boss, I remember talking to him, and uh, we were, it was in the early morning, it was when we were, first got open, and who gets their old change at 6 o'clock in the morning? I don't know, no one does, ever did, <laughs> but they opened at 6, all right? So I remember sitting there at 6 o'clock in the morning, just sitting in the office, no cars coming in, they weren't going to come in, probably for at least another two, three hours, maybe. So I had a lot of time of just me and my boss. And I started talking to him, witnessing to him. And one thing he told me, and I heard it time after time, and I'm sure you have too. And he said, yeah, you know, I went to church when I was a, teen, when I was a kid. And I remember when I was a teenager. By the time I was just in high school, we had three different youth pastors. And they all used a different verse of the Bible. I wonder why the poor guy's confused. Yeah. So he just forsook it all. We're dropping the ball. That's right. Yeah. We're leaving all these baby Christians around. And I think, well, I think we're all intelligent enough here to understand uh, a baby can't take care of itself. A baby Christian, we need to help nurture it. Man. Show them what the Bible says. Listen, I don't, get up with, I don't get upset with Charlotte because she cries at whatever time of day. Maybe annoying at the moment, <laughs> but I don't get upset. It's going to happen. She's a baby. Yeah. New believer in Christ, we ought not to get so upset or short with people because they make mistakes because they don't know any better. That's right, yeah. I thought you said you were saved. I just heard you cuss. Well, you have to learn. I've known some great people who the Lord, even with addictions, whatever it is, God saved them and they stopped this thing. Cold turkey. Never, never touch the bottle again. Never touch a cigarette again. You name it, whatever it was, they didn't do it again. But I also have known several that struggled, struggled with this. And so <coughs> constantly giving it to the Lord. Did they lose their salvation? Were they really not saved? Did they really not get it? No, they got it. But what pastor, pastor says many times, see them where they're at. See where they can be. And use the Bible, God's Word, and help them get there. Because yeah. I don't know about you, <coughs> even as a, someone that got saved at a young age, at 11 years old, I promise you, I made plenty of mistakes. Yeah. Just because I grew up in a Christian home doesn't mean I didn't make those mistakes. Guess what? People are going to make mistakes. We have to be the ones to help them, to be there for them when they fall, to be there for them yes. when they don't, when they think, oh, I mean, let's be honest here, how many people have we talked to and they'll say, oh, I can't go to church, if I go to church, the roof will cave in. <laughs> if I go to church, better wear a hard hat. All these different sayings. They already have that mentality. So what do you think their mentality, do you think it just changes all of a sudden because they got saved? No. So, so many times when they fall, and then we sit there and we kick them while they're down. We have to be so careful as Christians that we are doing what we have been commissioned to do. That's right. We ought to tell people about Christ, and then we ought to help them along the way, teach them. Because guess what? If they, if they don't just go and decide to get baptized all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them why. That's right, yes. Why you get baptized. Because guess what? If not, then they're just doing it for you. They're not doing it for the Lord. Mm -hmm. We want to bring them up. The best, a huge part of the Great Commission. But now, sadly, I'm here to say it. I think sometimes we're, we still struggle with the first part. Yeah, that's right. Yes. You know, that third servant we saw. <coughs> Why did he hide his talent? Well, in verse 20, uh, chapter 25, we see in verse 25, and I was afraid and went and hid my talent. In there. I was afraid. I'm asking you tonight, 
I'm not, I know just saying for myself, I'm not here to attack anybody. What I'm telling you, the Lord deals with me on first. I promise you. Let's not think of ourselves so proud to think, I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. Why? You know, brother, why do I have to? Well, Lord, 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 let's be a better example. The Lord deals with you. The Holy Spirit deals with you. Hey, you know, brother, do Lord, I'm in the grocery store. They have a job to do. Lady in the register, she does not want to go there. Go ahead. Give them a trap. No, listen. There's five people in line with it. They're all going to know. Here, here I am. I'm that, I'm that guy. I'm, about, I'm worse than ladies with a coupon. Take up the line. <laughs> it's, it's about, I'm, I'm that person, Lord. I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm talking. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Just five minutes ago, I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. Let's not be so proud here now tonight. Let's honestly just with yourself. I, I, please do not raise your hand. Okay, with yourself, think. How many times have we found ourselves just like that servant, mm -hmm. afraid, afraid, mm -hmm. yeah. nervous, bashful, and even ashamed? Tell someone about Jesus Christ and what He's done for you. If I can encourage you tonight, and I'm not, I promise you I'm not the first one to use this analogy. But really, what's the difference here? If you were one of the smartest people on earth, and you over uh, you over a set of time, you have now come up with the cure for cancer. You are all of a sudden afraid to share. Oh. Or I've had the cure for a year and I'm just now coming forward. I, I can't do it now. I, I can't. I can't tell anyone now. I can't share it now. Why thousands and thousands die. Yeah. Die. Will you tell me what's the difference <clears throat> and really what's 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 bigger here? That's right, yeah. We have the answer. Amen. Amen. We have the cure right here of eternal life. Not, not just so they can have a glimmer of an idea of what it may be like, mm -hmm. but they can know without a shadow of a doubt yeah. that once I die, if I die from cancer, if I die from whatever it is, if I get hit by a truck on the way home, that I know where I'm spending eternity. That's Pastor said, a lot of preachers have said, our life is so short. Let's not be ashamed or afraid and hide what God has given us. Mm -hmm. Let's double what the Lord has given us. Double ourselves. Which brings me to my last point. Going into my last point, I mentioned Life is short. There is an urgency for this. You see in James chapter 4 verse 14, I know we, most of us probably know it. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, what is your life? Yeah. It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. May hear people use that verse a lot. May hear preachers use that verse a lot. I'll tell you why. They use it because it's the truth. That's right. I think anybody can tell you here, especially anybody that may have a few years on there, can tell you life goes by fast. Right. Man. Even when Pastor was saying, I believe it was this morning, unless I'm thinking of a different time. The time you spend with your kids, it may have been last week or something, I can't remember, Pastor, but the time you spend with your kids, because you only have for 18 years. Invest in them now. Influence them now. Teach them why you can now. Because it goes by so fast. Sure, yes. Well, guess what? Our lives are so short. They go by so fast. What are you doing with what God gave you? Life is so short. Young people, life is short. <clears throat> Last year, uh, probably closer around this time, 
I was a teenager in Florida. He wasn't necessarily part of our youth group, and I'll tell you why here in a second. But he came to our vacation Bible school two years in a row. The first year he came, his name was Brock. I remember talking to Brock, talking to him, and he was interested. He, he, he enjoyed being there. But he never came back. He never could get him back. I didn't know why. I'd go to his house, invite him. Then I finally, I finally sort of caught on and understood why. His parents did not want him going. That was the last place they wanted him to be. I'm not sure why they felt that way. I can never talk to them. They did not want him in church. Well, somehow, he came to base Bible school the next year. And I had the great chance of leading him to the Lord. Amen. He got gloriously saved. And this time last year, my father-in-law called and talked to me. Uh, he committed suicide mm -hmm. in the oceans where they found him. Friday night, my wife and I, my, my wife gets a call from her, her dad, pastor down there. A teenager that was in our team group. She graduated this past spring. She just graduated college. Died. 21. Cardiac arrest. I'm not 100% sure, sure why. They think that they a blood clot. 21. The other boy, Brock, he was, I think he was 14. Life is short. Right. It's but a vapor. And I know a lot of us here probably have story after story of stuff like that. When I was a child, one of my best friends, his, his, he was a year older than me. His brother was a year younger than me. And we all three got along real good. His name was Timmy. He died at 11 years old in his sleep. No clue why. They even did a biopsy. To this day, I have no clue why. Lord decided to take him home. Quit breathing and died in sleep. Life is short. Yes. You are not, young people, teenagers, you are not promised right. to live, right. to be a father, <coughs> to be a grandma, grandpa. You're not promised that. I've seen it so many times already. Life is short. So when you're at school, don't be ashamed of what God did for you, yeah. what he's given you. My question to you tonight, where's your focus? And when the Lord comes, what will you hear? Will you hear, well done, that good and faithful son. Or will you hear that wicked and slothful servant? What will you hear? Let's all stand. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the time being in the Word. God, we thank you for your Word. Lord, we thank you for your gift. Will you give us, Lord, your Son, when this earth dying on the cross, shedding his blood, Lord, taking our sin upon himself, dying and being buried, rose again the third day, Lord. Just so we can have salvation. So we can have eternal life with you. God, I pray, Lord, the commission you've given us, telling the world about you, teaching the world about you, teaching those that are young in Christ of who you are and what you can be to them. Lord, I pray you be with us now in this time of invitation. heads bowed and eyes closed, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this would be the day that you can get that taken care of. Or maybe you've been struggling with that for a while, this would be a great opportunity. You know, we, if you've been saved, you have a story to tell. And God wants you to tell that story. So I wonder how many of you would say, with an uplifted hand, say, yes, I know that if I died this minute, I know for sure that I would go to heaven. I have placed my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone for salvation. If that's you, would you indicate that? Lift your hand real high. Put it right back down. I see many, many hands. Now, if you couldn't raise your hand, I wonder, do you care enough about your eternal soul where you'll spend eternity? How many would say, if I died right now, Pastor, I'm really not sure 
that I could go to heaven, but I sure would like to get that settled. If that's you, would you indicate that by lifting your hand real high? Anybody like that? See that hand? See that hand? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you very simply, same thing I said this morning. I don't know who all was in this morning service that is here tonight, but <clears throat> sometimes we have to hear things a couple times before the truths sink in. The Bible teaches that there is none righteous, no, not one. We're all sinners. We all deserve, because we're sinners, we deserve hell and the lake of fire. God's word says for the wages of sin is death. It's not just a physical death, but it's a spiritual death. Matter of fact, in Revelation 21.8, it says that death is the lake of fire. That second death is the lake of fire. That's what we deserve. God knew there was no way you and I could save ourselves. We could not be good enough. We could not be religious enough. So he did the only thing that could be done is he came down to this earth. He lived a sinless life so he could be a sinless sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice. He shed his blood on Calvary. He was beaten, humiliated, tortured, everything because of our sin. And then after he died, he rose from the dead the third day to prove that he really was who he said he was. And his blood can wash away your sin if you will simply put your faith and trust in him and ask him to save you. You can pray a simple prayer like this, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And as best I know how, I'm asking you to save me and forgive me for my sin. I know, Lord, I deserve hell and the lake of fire, but I want to go to heaven someday, and I'm asking you to save me. And I like what Rodney, I think, used this verse earlier, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was the strongest language God can use there. It wasn't might be saved or may be saved. Or if you do a bunch of good things afterwards, you shall be saved. No, it says, you call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Would you be willing to do that right now? Just pray that simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And the best of I'm asking you to save me. Now I wonder if you raised your hand a moment ago, or maybe you didn't raise your hand a moment ago. Maybe you needed to. Is there anyone here who prayed that prayer and said, yes, I prayed and asked the Lord to save me just now. I want to make sure I get that nailed down. This might not have been the first time. Maybe this is the first time that you maybe understood a little bit what you were doing. Anybody like that? Would you indicate that? Lift your hand real high. Say, yes, I prayed that prayer right now and I meant it with all my heart. See that? Yes. Amen. See that hand? Amen. You can put it down. Anybody else? Well, we're going to have a song of invitation here, and this would be a time for you <clears throat> if you want to come and pray at the altar. And I want to challenge you as well as we get ready to sing this song. What song? 318. 318 as we sing. I want to challenge you this week. You know, God wants us to duplicate ourselves as Dan preached. And, you know, if you don't have any goals in life, you're going to hit those goals every time. You're going to be wandering seamlessly. Let's have a goal. I heard a preacher years ago said, if your goal is a soul, everything else will be under control. Let's have a goal this week that we're going to try to pass out at least one gospel track or try to witness to at least one person this week with God's help. God will help you do it. If you're afraid, you're nervous, God will give you the strength. You can just hand in the track. First time I had one guy tell me, he said, I was... Uh, I just left it on their window. He was in Walmart parking lot. He goes, I just left it on the window. And I went and sat in my car and watched. And the guy came out, picked it up, sat in his car and started reading. He said, I was so excited to see they started reading. He was scared to death to hand it to him in person. But will you at least give out one track today or this week? Will you at least make it a goal in your life? This is something we all need to be doing. We have a wonderful story. We have the story of eternal life. And we don't do well if we keep it by ourselves. As we sing I need you every
appreciate that message, Dan. I'm going to ask you if you would here in a minute. Uh, we're going to have you can be seated for just a second. Uh, if I can get the, a couple of deacons come forward, or a couple of men pass out uh, these little votes. If you are.